founder Abraham Penn taught a valuable lesson that has been part of a tradition since 1919 when he said, I'd rather make a friend than make a sale. For more than 90 years, Puritan has been making friends as a unique family-owned company right here in Cape Cod. At Puritan Cape Cod on 199 Main Street, as well as Chatham, Mashpee, and Hyannis, you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing, as well as ski and tennis equipment, and much more. Puritan Cape Cod, 548-0116 or PuritanCapeCod.com. Internet services provided by Cape.com Incorporated. Established in 1994, Cape.com is the only locally owned and operated internet service provider on Cape Cod. Our specialties include e-commerce applications and design, wide area networking services, and high-speed DSL internet access throughout eastern Massachusetts. Cape.com continues to lead the way with cutting-edge applications, superior networking services, and quality customer support. For more information, visit us at www.cape.com or call us at 
14th meeting of the Board of Selectmen, and I invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we begin the meeting, I would like to uh, just make a comment and ask for a moment of silence because we have lost three very, very wonderful people in the last few weeks, people who have been residents here for a long time and made enormous contributions to the town. And the first is Paul Ferris Smith. He uh, was the husband of Mary Lou Smith, and Mary Lou Smith almost single-handedly was the one who saved Highfield. It was her dedication and her efforts with Paul beside her uh, as you know, Mary Lou was the editor of the Book of Falmouth, and, uh, and Paul was always there. They, they were summer people early on and then moved here, and Paul worked in Woods Hole. And uh, his wife died two years ago, so it was a great loss to lose Paul. The other person we have lost is Joe Massini. Joe and Paula own the country fair, and those of you who have breakfast there, Joe cooked breakfast and lunch for, what, 17 years, I think. And uh, he, he was always, he was out there. He wasn't hidden in the kitchen. He was right out front cooking whatever anybody wanted. And if you didn't, and he'd ask you if you didn't like it, you know, he'd do it again. Uh, but Joe and Paula together uh, actually ran a wonderful business here in Falmouth. And he is going to be very much missed. And the last person who passed away this week is Bob Bidwell. Bob Bidwell uh, was an attorney. His son, Todd Bidwell, is the uh, um, manager of the, of the Island Queen. And uh, Todd had also worked for the Chamber of Commerce. But Bob had been an attorney for many years in practice. And he was the first president of Historic Highfield. He and Susan and I used to work together, mostly they, Susan and Bob worked together, and you know, when I wasn't working, I joined them. And uh, we spent a lot of time doing all of, uh, and Bob was doing all the legal work to try to see how we could possibly save that building and how we could uh, eventually, we had, were in a mediation with the conservatory. Eventually, we were able to um, acquire the building. But Bob gave of himself tremendously in that effort. Uh, pro bono without any, any reason or any um, intent on his part to benefit in any way. He did not. He was um, passionate about historic preservation, and that's why he did it. So we're going to miss Bob. He moved uh, to Florida just a few years ago. Um, he was not in the best of health when he left Falmouth, but um, all three are going to be very much missed. So let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. So next on our agenda, we have a proclamation because we have an Eagle Scout, Peter Rene Boots Faubert. You're here tonight. And uh, would you like to come over to the podium? And we have a proclamation. Who has? Would you like to read the proclamation? It'd be a pleasure. Please. <laughs> As a scouter myself. <laughs> Whereas Peter Rene Boots Faubert of Boy Scout Troop 42 has successfully completed qualifications for the rank of Eagle Scout, a rigorous and demanding process that teaches patience, perseverance, and teamwork and requires strong goal setting. And whereas Peter Rene Boots Faubert met these challenges with a plum and shall be recognized as an outstanding representative of his family, his troop, and his community. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America, long acknowledged for building fine citizens, calls for a special court of honor to award its highest symbol of achievement to those who complete this rank. And whereas Peter Obey Boots Faubert is now an Eagle Scout with all its rank and privilege, 
Now, therefore, we, Mary Pat Flynn, Doug Jones, Rebecca Moffitt, Susan Moran, and Samuel Patterson, as selectmen of the town of Falmouth, do hereby declare and proclaim Saturday, July 26, 2014, as Peter Rene Boots Hilbert Day. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hand and caused the great seal of the town of Falmouth to be affixed. Congratulations, Peter. Congratulations, Peter. So you have a lot of badges there, uh, I must say. Uh, so what is, what's next for you now that you've achieved this highest rank in the Boy Scouts? And do you know what you want to study or yet? Not, Not quite. Oh, ideas. Good. Well, congratulations. We're very proud for you. I second the motion. Yes, motion. Um, any discussion on the motion to approve the proclamation? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Great. I always like to start out the meetings with good things. And uh, now we'll go to the minutes. Uh, the minutes first of uh, June 23rd, a regular meeting of the board. I will approval of the minutes of June 23rd of our regular meeting. I have no corrections. Anybody else? No? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. The motion carries. Next are the minutes of June 9th, which is an executive session, so these minutes would not be released. These are the ones that have been in change, had, had a little correction from right. the previous ones? Mm -hmm. I have moved approval of the minutes of June 9th executive session and not release. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Unanimous. The motion carries. So now we welcome the school committee. Um, Yes, what do we have? Public oh, comment. public comment. How could I forget? Public comment. Anyone who c wishes to speak um, on any matter that is not on the agenda, and you have two minutes on a public comment. Mr. Cunha. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Danny Cunha. I'm a resident of Falmouth, native of Falmouth. I love Falmouth. 2002, they started emptying dumpsters on Davis Straits after 2, 2 a.m. all the way. I was fortunate to catch one of the fellows the following week. There was more than one contractor emptying the dumpsters. At 3.30 in the morning, I said to him, why are you emptying this at 3.30 in the morning? And he says, I have to beat the boat traffic to Woods Hole. I went to the town hall, and I was told by the health agent he had no control over commercial dumpsters. I then left the town hall, went to a friend. A bylaw was written 11 years ago, and it's been peaceful for 11 years. Now, I read something in the paper that we're going to start picking up some areas at 2 a.m. again for six months. Next year, it might be Davis Straits again. What happened to my town bylaw that the residents of Warren Avenue and myself all got together, signed, and worked hard? It was approved by the Attorney General. I have copies of it that it was approved on. Uh, March 20th, 2003. That's all I have to say. What happened to the bylaw? Is it going to be still in effect? By the way, <clears throat> I counted the dumpsters from Dillingham Avenue to Jones Road. 23 dumpsters. Only 15 abut resident houses. 
they went, when they, the town decided to put business, they went all the way to Worcester Court on the east side. They went 400 feet on my side, on the west side. I love Falmouth. And I, I, want, I want a quiet. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Dufresne. Uh, Adrian Dufresne, uh, resident of Precinct 2. Uh, primarily, I'm here tonight to speak as a town meeting member. Uh, in the year 2006, the town of Falmouth passed Article 38, which was approved by the Attorney General. I'll pass this along to the Board of Selectmen, which limits the hours of pickup from 7 to 7. And in a off-hour collection clause, the Board of Health may alter that if, it is, if an off-hour collection is necessary to protect public health. My question to the Board of Selectmen as the authority for the rubbish pickup throughout the entire town, I think there's something like five or six contractors that pick up rubbish in the town of Falmouth. What criteria was presented to the Board of Health that would allow them to alter the uh, hours approved by a unanimous vote of town meeting, that's, that's the first thing, by unanimous vote, and uh, by telling the contractor, uh, and I think we all know who the contractor is, I don't believe I have to make his, say his name, uh, that he can disconnect his backup alarm, which is illegal under, under the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The backup alarm was placed for public safety. So if the Board of Selectmen is aware, perhaps you can tell the public here t tonight, if it's possible, what criteria did the Board of Health use in establishing the off-hour collection necessary to protect public health? Not public convenience. It shouldn't be uh, convenience for the contractor. Public health. And the uh, bylaw reads 7 to 7. And there are those of us that are concerned because if it's allowed in Woods Hall to one contractor, uh, it could be allowed to every contractor. And I think there's five or six of them in the town of Falmouth. I happen to represent Precinct 2, and I can tell you there's a lot of canisters in my precinct that I would not like to see being empty any earlier than uh, 7. So I, I ask that of, of, of the Board of Selectmen. Could you give us that information so that we can understand how the Board of Health could take this action? Thank you, Mr. Dufresne. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Well, you're next. Go ahead. Good evening. Edward Jalowick, Alma Road. Thank you for the opportunity to address the Board. On Saturday, July 12th, from 2 to 10 p.m., there was a fundraising concert at the band shell at Falmouth Inner Harbor. The volume of this music was beyond belief. I called the police department. They said they were getting calls from as far away as Davisville. I walked from my house on Elma Road along the shores of Little Pond. It was like the concert was in my back pocket. I couldn't sit on my deck and speak with my wife in the afternoon and enjoy a quiet afternoon. God help anybody who was having a wedding down at the Flying Bridge or trying to enjoy a quiet dinner. A gentleman that I ran into when I was walking along Little Pond trying to see how far this noise was carrying had rented a house for the summer, or for a week. He spent over $3,000. He was planning on patronizing the restaurants and shops. His children couldn't sleep. The noise went on and on. He called the police. He said he will never, ever spend another dime in the town of Felmont. The police, when I called, said they had many calls. They can't do anything about it because there was a permit issued. And I asked, what kind of a permit allows a public nuisance to go on and on? At what point can the police intervene and pull the plug or say, turn the volume down? The Board of Selectmen developed a special events policy, and I think that needs to be revisited, and I ask you to do that. It should consider noise, the amplification of music, how far away from the venue can it be audible, and at what hours does it need to be reduced. 
and it needs to consider that the sound carries differently under different atmospheric conditions. If it can be heard a half a mile, quarter mile from the venue, I think that's way, way too loud. So I ask you to revisit your policy, stop this type of activity that prevents those of us who live in this town or people who come to visit here from enjoying this community. I've been awakened Thank by... Thank you. Your two minutes are up. I'm sorry. I, th I Thank appreciate you very much. that. Thank you. Uh, John. John Elliott. This is my crane. <laughs> I'm here to speak in opposition to the... Uh, 2 a.m. Uh, pickup. I don't think it's necessary. This opportunity has been in front of the haulers for, oh, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. They could have filed for a permit at any time. None of them have ever filed, ever having a problem with it. Uh, the public safety, it's in the uh, town uh, code, 191-11 off hour collections, for public safety. Never once in the minutes. I have the minutes of the meeting here. Was public safety of any concern? The only concern is the almighty dollar. Now, early morning pickup, I live on Scranton Avenue. Your concert last night, well, I, you were, it's still fresh in your mind, was excellent. It was very, very loud. I closed my windows at 3 in the afternoon and couldn't open them to hear it. Uh, TV. However, at 10 o'clock they made a nice speech saying they thanked the town. The town had set the hours on that and they finished off. They broke it right off at 10 o'clock. They did a good job. Now, the health board has erred in this decision to give this extra, uh, these extra hours. They have erred in many decisions. We had a signed contract with the uh, railroad for 40,000 ton a year. We had to bring it there or we had to pay the railroad. It was signed. What do they do? The Board of Health says, well, you can take it somewhere else. Just tell us you do it. For two years, they didn't tell us about one ton they took out of town. Today, there was not one red truck at the transfer station other than roll-offs. None of these ones that pick up the dumpsters ever were there. They've gone somewhere else to dump. And believe me, uh, any change or any uh, change you make in these rules and regulations, you have to watch them because they have not been observed in the past and no one seems to uh, care about it. Thank I you, John. You your time is up. Already? Your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your comments. Okay. <laughs> George Hampson. Okay, one minute, George Hampson. Two minutes. <laughs> uh, North Falmouth, and I'd like to announce that we have a candidate uh, awesome. for our Coastal um, Management Committee, and he's available to your discretion, and hopefully um, we'll have a person aboard. Uh, I love this town. I also like very, very much uh, the chimes from the church. It uh, doesn't keep me awake. I love it. Right across the street, and also the Catholic Church up the street. And I just love those chimes. And I love my town. Thank you, George. Is there anyone else, Mr. Finneran? I'm passing out a uh, Mark Finneran, Precinct 6. I'd like to speak on the uh, same subject that the gentlemen are here, with the acceptance of Ed. <clears throat> <laughs> what you have there is a past decision of the Ethics Commission against some of the same uh, entities that are involved in the, tonight's uh, conflict. That was the first. There was the second was the pro flow control, as Mr. Elliott mentioned. This uh, incident with the early uh, morning hour collection is the third incident. Remember when they used to say the appearance of a conflict is a conflict enough? As you can see in there on number 17, they stated over and over again, 
through the thing that uh, it's unlawful to use your position to advance someone else. The contractor's name is there. I uh, really think that the selectmen should um, review this because it's not fair and equitable at all. And it doesn't take into consideration the town code, the bylaws, and um, it's just wrong. You need to review it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak under public comment? Okay. Seeing none, we will now move to the joint committee with the school committee. And um, this is a joint committee uh, that uh, the, an election like this usually occurs when someone resigns midterm. And uh, the school committee did have a, a resignation. Emily Dayburn um, resigned from the school committee just recently. And so what the process calls for is that the boards in combination or jointly will interview candidates to, to replace uh, that, that opening. And the person who is appointed now uh, will still have to run for election in the next May. So it isn't as if we're appointing to a full term or we're appointing to an unexpired term. We're actually appointing to the until the next election. And the, the process also calls for the uh, appointment to be done jointly by the school committee and the Board of Selectmen. So I thought, since most of you, we have named nameplates, so you know who we are, but I thought the school committee might introduce themselves so you know who they are. We'll start with the chairman. Hi, I'm Susan Augusta, chairman of the Falmouth School Committee. Uh, thank you very much for having us here this evening to appoint this uh, person uh, to a very special committee in this town. It's uh, I'd also like to introduce our, or have my committee members introduce themselves, but I'd also like to acknowledge that we have our superintendent, Dr. Bonnie Gifford, in the audience as well, as well as Nancy Taylor, who is our director of pupil personnel services. Um, Terry? Okay. Hi, I'm Terry Medeiros. I'm the secretary of the school committee. I'm Donna Madison. I'm Laura Peterson. I'm Leah Palmer. Kelly Welch. Alan Jacobs. Go ahead. Well, thank you all very much and welcome. So we have um, a process here that um, uh, the chairman and I have worked on together. And I think the plan, I'm going to turn it over to you, Susan. Okay. Why, since you kind of helped mostly developed all of this and we just kind of shared in the process. Go ahead. As Pat mentioned, it's an appointed term that will be only until 2015 and that the two governing bodies will meet to fill the vacancy by a roll call vote. Uh, the candidate must receive a majority of the votes of the officers entitled to vote, and we have eight school committee members here who are entitled to vote, as well as uh, the members of the Board of Selectmen. We have two candidates, Gina Palanza and Heidi Murata, and we'd like to give each candidate an opportunity to make a statement of two to three minutes, and then in alternating fashion, which is a little bit different than the, we've done in the past, respond to uh, four questions that we have and after that we'll have the opportunity for uh, any additional questions from either the, either the members of the Board of Selectmen or school committee members. If you could please keep your um, statement within two to three minutes and your response to the questions um, within a two minute time frame. So if we, let's start with, um, I know it's a little awkward coming up to the podium but uh, this is about the best we can do this evening. So if you wouldn't mind, Gina, we'll start with you and your two to three minute statement. Hi, uh, my name is Gina Palanza. I grew up in this town. I love it too. Um, I have three children, one of whom has already graduated from Falmouth High School in 2010. I have uh, my son, and daughter who are here with me. My son will be in seventh grade at Lawrence School next year, my daughter in fourth grade at T-Ticket. I've been um, very active in the school system since my oldest, who is now um, 22 years old, when he started kindergarten, I started volunteering. And I've progressively become more and more involved. And so I've been through many different stages, and I've, at the beginning of every single one, have been afraid and open-minded. and willing to pay attention and um, see where I fit and see where I can help. And I feel like the school committee is the next logical step for me. I understand that um, we're coming upon a challenging year 
and um, I was very vocal at the budget meetings. Um, I don't know if any of you remember that, but um, I feel like I don't want to just stand on a soapbox. I want to roll up my sleeves. I want to work with you. I want to do what I can. So, thank you. Thank you. Heidi Morata. Hi, my name is Heidi Morata. I live in North Falmouth. Um, I've been a resident of Falmouth my whole life, and um, I'm married, and I have two children that attended Falmouth Public Schools. Um, first, I want to talk about, I already served on the um, school committee for six years, and I want to talk about why I left. Um, I had two children, and um, they both needed me at the time, and there's a lot of hours that get put into school committee, and it's a very important job, and at the time, I had to devote my time to my children instead of school committee. Um, attendance to me on the school committee is the most important thing that you can do. By attending every meeting, and um, most people don't realize, but there's all these other meetings that go along with it, which are subcommittee meetings and um, your representatives on different boards. Um, I was really passionate about school committee, and when I thought that I couldn't give enough time, I um, stepped down after I served two terms. However, now I have time again. Um, I want to talk about what I've done since I left school committee, because um, education and children are very important to me. Um, I be was a member of the uh, VIPS Board of Advisors um, during school committee as a representative, and then I actually went on to the board as a member. Uh, this past year I served as vice chair on that board. I'm also a town meeting member, and I'm, I stepped into that position after I left school committee because I thought it was really important <coughs> to have a voice when we're voting on big budgets like the school committee budget. Um, I also volunteered in Falmouth Public Schools for many, many years, and I also volunteer um, doing the toy uh, distribution at the service center. Another activity I'm about involved in is um, a public outreach through um, my work where I'm an IT specialist at the National Marine Fisheries Service, and uh, we take our vessel over to Martha's Vineyard right now, and we do um, public outreach for the school children there and do tours. Um, Part of the reason that I think that school committee is so important is the um, policy manuals, and I was spent a lot of time when I was on school committee rewriting those, and it was just such a long process that um, I want to be involved in that again. Um, I realized that it's a very hard decision to make um, as far as the appointment, and um, I hope who we, whoever gets the appointment that they um, actually do run again in May so that we can follow up good work, so thank you. Thank you. Perhaps to save time, if you guys would not mind standing okay. behind there and <laughs> alternating. Okay, so the first one in the alternating fashion, if you wouldn't mind, Heidi, what contributions do you hope to make to Fallon Public Schools as a school committee member? Mm -hmm. Um, number one, I think, is good attendance. Um, we've had a lot of people come on school committee that didn't necessarily come to all of our meetings. So now that I have the time again, I really want to be active in all the meetings. Um, number two, um, I think that you have to understand the, fall, the pulse of Falmouth Public Schools, and I've always tried to keep, be very aware of that. Um, I think it's very good to understand the culture, um, the principles, the interaction with teachers, and um, the management that the superintendent does with the schools. Um, number three, um, I think you really need to very actively participate, participate in your subcommittees, and I was really active. Like I said, we rewrote the policy manual, which is about this thick, and we also redid the handbooks. Um, I also served under three superintendents, so I served on the search committees, and I also um, uh, did uh, a lot with the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, that was near and dear to my heart because my um, son has special needs, so um, there were a lot of meetings to go to. Um, I think that you have to understand the policy impacts. Um, when we make policy for school committee, um, you know, you have to understand not only the history and the longevity about why certain policies were written in the past, but um, what kind of impacts it's going to have in modern day. And the policy manual is something that constantly changes. So I think that I have a good uh, feeling for it because we were rewriting a lot of very old policies when I came into play. Um, 
The other thing is, um, I think that longevity of members, well, I think it's great. I, I highly encourage the public to become involved in school committee. I really appreciate the longevity of members that have served and that their dedication to uh, serving on the board. Um, there's a lot of history that comes into play when um, decisions are made, and I think that when you look to senior members, which I obviously wasn't one, um, but when they come in to meetings and um, give you the information that you might not have, I think it's very important. Um, the other thing, too, is that when we work with other boards, um, we need to be really communicative, um, especially between the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen when it comes to things like budget. Thanks, Abby. Mm -hmm. Gina, what contributions do you hope to make to the Family Public Schools as a school committee member? Well, um, I'm still very involved inside of the school buildings. Um, I understand the commitment. I understand the extra meetings that you need to go to. I've been an active member on the PTO. I've been heavily involved with fundraising. I've been on the school council. I was on the committee that um, studied the decline in enrollment and um, was looking to decide the possibility of shifting the buildings and changing things around. Um, and so um, I do, I have that background. Um, but I think what I have also is that, you know, having grown up in this town and sort of being very outspoken, people are very aware how involved I am in the, um, you know, how passionate I am about education in this town. Therefore, many conversations happen organically for me while I'm at the schools, when I'm at the supermarket. I'm a hairdresser, I have many clients who come in. So I am able to have many conversations with different people and, um, and people, I think that I'm very approachable. People come to me and talk to me about things. I understand that processes need to be followed. I think I work very well with a team. I think that um, I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not afraid of change. I've seen a lot of change over the years, um, some good and some bad. And um, I'd like to see a stronger relationship built between um, the schools and the outside community, people who aren't necessarily connected through students. Um, just because I think it's an investment for everybody in the town. I think there's probably a lot of experience that I don't have, that I don't necessarily bring to the table, but I am a quick study. I learn, I pay attention. Um, I do have a lot of background in the schools, but I think I also have a lot to learn, and I don't think by any means that um, any, any opinions that I have are engraved in stone. So, thank you. Hey, What would your budget priorities be during the upcoming budget process? Hmm. Um, there's lots of buzzwords that you can use here, but obviously um, classroom size is a big one. Um, I personally um, saw this over and over again with my students when they were in school, my children rather. Um, I think that it makes a huge difference on teaching morale for the teachers, and um, I think that we get better results with small classroom sizes. Um, a second priority is professional development with our teachers. The world is evolving so much and so rapidly, I think that we really need to make sure that that's part of our budget if we can. Um, you know, they're great about doing it on their own, but I think that we also need to make sure that we assist them. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is that culture thing because I think principals really know the pulse of their schools and um, we need to have confidence in our principals and our teaching staff so that they're enthusiastic. And because the, there's such volatile funding going on right now, um, it's our job as school committee to try to maintain that stability so that the schools have um, a very comfortable uh, place to work and then that's just going to be reflected in the classrooms because teachers are going to want to come in and teach very enthusiastically. Um, I want to talk about whole child education. Um, one of the things that um, kind of bothers me is when we obviously focus on test standardized testing. And um, I think I went to the, um, one of the budget meetings at the high school, um, and one of the students spoke so eloquently about like their lifelines and what was important to them when they were in the school. 
and they talked about <clears throat> arts and um, music, and um, I think that's really important for the culture of our town that we don't lose sight of that when we're actually trying to put together a budget. So um, I know it's a lot, and uh, there's a lot of things to balance, and it's very, very complicated to put together such a large budget. But um, I think that the most important thing that school committee can do is not only listen to what the priorities are for the um, students, but also to advocate um, what they think is best for the students. Thank you. And what would your budget priorities be during the upcoming budget process? Um, I also believe that cl small classroom sizes are very important. Um, I, I could list off all of the priorities that I have, but I think, um, unfortunately, what it really comes down to is money and not having enough of it. Um, I think that we need I, to inform the community and let them know the cuts that have already happened over the last five plus years. Uh, I don't think enough people realize how many programs have, you know, it's, it's amazing what the teachers and the staff have done to make up for it. But um, I think a definitive plan needs to be put in place of how money would be used if we could get more. And I think communication is very important there. Um, as far as, you know, like every year the budget being frozen and the teachers needing supplies, um, I think it's really important that, um, that we don't, that we don't go backwards in the quality of education in this town. And I think, um, I think this town has had a great school system for many years and um, it's unfortunate that there have been a lot of cuts as far as funding goes. Um, I'm hoping to maybe help to figure out how to possibly consolidate some things. I know that the, uh, the librarians and the um, technology teachers are consolidating and I think that's a really good idea. Um, I am um, so nervous right now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not a very good, I'm not very good with interviews. I'm just used to just doing things. I'm not, I'm not used to talking about things. But um, but like I said, I think I have a lot to learn. And um, and as far as the budget priorities, I have um, you know probably the same as what most people would think: keeping the classroom sizes small retaining teachers who make a difference. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, not a fine, I'm not a numbers person. I'm a people's, people person. So um, I think, you know, open communication with the teachers as far as what works and what doesn't is really important. And again, it'll be a learning process. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey. <coughs> Do you want me to always go first? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Do you want to rotate? We're going to alternate, huh? Um, <laughs> come on back, Gina. <laughs> what is the proper role of the school committee in furthering the education of families children? Um, so I went on your website and looked at your mission statement, and it said, make decisions to fulfill the educational needs of children. This is the primary responsibility with which the citizens entrust the school committee. My experience when I've been to school committee meetings is you know, that um, it seems to be, a, it provides checks and balances, make sure that things are getting done. It's a sounding board for um, the public to come and express their concerns and ask their questions. Um, I know that there's so much more that goes into it as far as um, making plans, um, setting goals. I saw what happened with the Lawrence School and the School Improvement Plan, and um, I understand that you know policies need to be put in place and that you review them and, and make sure that they stay current. Um, community relations, I think, is really important, sort of a bridge um, between what's happening you know, in the administration building and um, with the parents and, and the general public. Um, I know that... Um, you know, concerns with the health and safety of the children. I've um, 
you know, been to many meetings and seen people make pre presentations, and um, and I know that um, you have say on curriculum, um, and teachers come and present different ideas that they've had, and also in the um, in the negotiation process for teacher salaries, things like that. I don't know. So I know that it, it, there's a big umbrella of different things that you do. And again, I'm not the best interviewer. <laughs> but I, um, I know that it's, it takes a lot of time. And there are many different aspects to it. And that's why it's a room filled with many different people with many different backgrounds so that everybody could sort of bring their perspective into it. So, that's it. Thank you. Heidi, what is the proper role of the school committee in furthering the education of Bella's children? Um, number one is um, advocacy, where you take and you put the children first in every decision that you make. Um, you can't come onto school committee with any agenda, and you have to be really open to listening. But um, the proper role is clearly defined by laws, and we cannot cross those boundaries. And it's very important when you come on to school committee to know that there's really only three things that we do. Some superficial on the side, but you know we set policy, we do um, the budget approval process, and then we do superintendent evaluations, which I think need to be thoughtful and do constructive feedback. Um, it's difficult to um, know to stay within those boundaries sometimes when you come on the board. And um, you know, just with the experience that I had, I understand those very well. Um, going to the training that's provided um, for us um, was really helpful. Um, when I was on um, school committee before, uh, we were going through the di very difficult override for um, the high school. And um, I thought one of our rules was um, to voice to the public what um, decisions were being made and why we needed to make them. Um, the school committee is the most informed about what our budget process looks like, what our schools look like, and they're the voice to the public. And I think that we need to do our due diligence to make sure that the entire community is very well informed about not only why decisions get made, but what our upcoming decisions so that if it's a vote in town meeting, then they can be um, very well informed instead of just necessarily reading what, what's in the newspaper. So I think that our role is to um, be the voice for the children and advocate for them. Okay, if you want to stand there, what are the most important things a family student can learn in preparing for a productive and satisfying life? Um, I actually wanted to talk about my experience at Falmouth High School. Um, I had a math teacher that was instrumental in um, changing the course of my life, and his name was Tony Casso, and he taught computer math. And that was in a time when there was no such thing as really computers. And um, he really inspired me, and um, at the time, my parents were getting divorced, I had no money, and I wanted to go to college, and um, I went to Bridgewater State College and I got my degree in computer science. And um, that person made such a difference in my life that I always feel like I should get back to Falmouth Public Schools. Um, I'm an IT specialist at the National Marine Fisheries in Woods Hole, and um, I'm still in town. And that's what you really want to have happen with your children here. And I think that we don't necessarily pay enough attention to that. You know, there, we have wonderful, great, incredible students coming out of our school systems, but I think that we probably have to do a little bit more to keep them here if we can. Um, and I think that we could talk to them about what community service is. The reason that I'm here is this is another thing that I can do for my community by serving on this board. And um, I, maybe sometimes we miss that. Although there are a lot of students involved in the VIPS program at school, I think that they need to love their town enough that they serve freely. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, when we talked about the budget, one of the things I spoke about was um, we need to have people that love music because those are the people that play at the town band shell. And we need to have kids that love art because we have lots of art galleries in our town. 
Um, we need to have kids that love sports, and that's why they're still skating at the adult youth league at, or the adult league at the um, uh, ice rink. Um, we want to make people so that it's not just about a test, and it's actually giving them and inspiring them for a career and to be a really well-rounded person where you have activities in your life and you have community service. And we can't just necessarily focus on the one thing of getting a diploma. Thank you. Gina? What are the most important things a family student can learn in preparing for a productive and satisfying life? It's funny, I um, asked my 12-year-old what he thought the answer to this question would be. And he said in this order, technology, social skills, and work ethic, which I thought were pretty impressive. Um, I think for anybody to have a productive and satisfying life, it all starts with learning about yourself as a person, discovering who you really are. And as a parent, I love watching my children establishing their own identities. I think teachers are the greatest resources and guidance in this area. Um, next to parents. But I will say, as a parent, there have been many times where a teacher has said to me, hey, do you know that your son likes this? And I wasn't aware. He has, you know, this talent. Um, there was one teacher in particular at Falmouth High School who um, acted as a guidance counselor for my oldest son and helped us to map out a plan for him. And um, and he's, he's re reached every goal that he set for himself as a result of it. Um, I think it's important for students to recognize their strengths to be challenged so that they can handle failure or something that they can't necessarily do right away to feel that feeling of um, accomplishment and pride when they get it right. Um, But I do, I do think it all really starts with getting to know yourself as a person and what inspires you and what sparks that passion inside <coughs> you. Thank you. I'd like to turn it back over to Mrs. Flynn in regards to if any uh, members of the Board of Selectmen or members of the school committee have any additional questions. Okay, I think I'll start with the other members of the school committee. Would any of you have any questions for either of the candidates? Judy. I think a quick question for both, because we'll ask just one of you. Um, both of you graduated from the Family High School, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so could you just address what kept you in family, like, what, how you talked about? Because um, that's something I'd like to do. What kept me in Falmouth was this community. I have never felt so safe and like if I needed somebody, this town has your back. We all come together and, um, and I've, I've watched it through the years. I worked for years on Main Street and I watched the revitalization of Main Street and how much pride and care people have in this town and, and I feel it too. And um, I wanted my family to be raised with that sense of community and with that love and pride for where they come from. I actually moved away for a little while when I got my college degree and um, I wanted to come back to raise my children here. Um, my experience in Falmouth was always picture perfect. and um, Not that every day was perfect, but overall that's what you really have to look at. So I wanted to come back and make sure that they loved the town as much as I did. Anybody else on the school committee with a question? Now how about Board of Select? Anybody have a question for either candidate? No? Well, well, well I, will, I will say, yes, Judy. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for that. You've already replaced Emily. <laughs> and graduated to your ranks. <laughs> well, thank you. So, so now that you have big shoes to fill, then <laughs> if you're uh, not. Um, 
I want to thank both candidates. I think you were very expressive and very thoughtful in your responses. And I'm sure it's not going to be very easy for either board to make a decision here. But I'm going to um, call, call a roll call vote, for, and uh, I will call your name the school committee first and then the Board of Selectmen, and as I call your name, if you would give me your choice of candidate. Susan Augusta. Um, Heidi Murata. Laura Peterson. Gina Palazzo. Terry Medeiros. Heidi Murata. Alan Jacobs. I really have to you. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's tough. It's very tough. Uh, uh, Donna Matheson Earls. I echo your sentiments exactly. They're both very well qualified. I would encourage both of them to run when there's no one. I uh, I say Gina Palanza. Leah Palmer. Um, I also echo that. Hey, I follow the rules. I would have said all that second. <laughs> <laughs> so, be clear, you yes. are Gina Palanza. Gina Palanza. By the way, I must say that there are 13 votes here, and so the majority vote is seven. So the candidate who receives seven or more votes will be the appointee. Kelly Welsh. Hi, Mara. Uh, Judy Fenwick. Hi, Mara. Doug Jones. Hi, Mara. Rebecca Moffat. Heidi Morata. Susan Moran. Gina Palanza. Sam Patterson. Heidi Morata. And I will vote for Gina Palanza. Seven, six. For Heidi so Murata. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So J uh, Heidi Morata, you are the you are the chosen candidate. And again, thank you both very much. You spent a lot of time and you were very thoughtful in your presentation, so thank you very much. And thank you to the school committee. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a break while the school committee leaves, although you're welcome to stay if you want to. We'll take about a two-minute break. Hmm?